Our lesson this week, it is a lesson that is the final lesson for the fall quarter. A quarter where we have taken a look at obedience and disobedience. We know again from all that we have learned this quarter that when one chooses to live in obedience to the word of God, the end result is one being blessed by the Lord. We please the Lord in the way in which we are going. We are blessed. We are highly favored in God's eyes. However, as we saw throughout the book of Judges, when one chooses to forsake the Lord, when one chooses to disregard his instructions, when one chooses not to heed his rebuke, that one is living in sin for which they aren't going to be blessed by the Lord. You cannot live in disobedience and somehow be blessed by God. That is what we saw throughout the fall quarter. Our Sunday school lesson this week, it covers scripture that's going to be from the 36th chapter of 2 Chronicles, and then we'll skip over to the 137th Psalm. Our lesson starts off there in the 15th verse. Where there in the 15th verse, we are given a recount of God's history of sending warnings through his messengers, his messengers being his prophets. Again, all quarter we have seen where the Lord, he raised up either judges or he raised up prophets to again, give a rebuke to Israel. The rebuke of the Lord was a show of mercy. It was a show of compassion. It was a show of love from the Lord. Because as we know, a rebuke is God essentially giving us a second chance to not continue in error, not to continue in sin, but to turn around. That is to live in repentance. And again, the onus is on us after the rebuke. We know the steps of forgiveness. The one who has been wronged in the steps of forgiveness, they should offer the rebuke, which God has done. The onus then falls on us in the second step to heed the rebuke. We are to then move in repentance. That is, we are to move in the correction that has been offered to us. And then when we have earned, when we have proven that we have turned away from the wickedness or turned away from the error, the wrong, then the one who has been wrong should forgive us of the wrongs that we have done. We'll see here in the 15th verse that the Lord, he says the reason as to why he continued to send the prophets was again, because he had compassion. He was sympathetic on his people. God, I want you to understand that the Lord, he is compassionate still to this day. The Lord is compassionate on all of us. He sympathizes. He understands our plight. He is not harsh on us to where we are immediately punished for our sins. No, all of us today, we live under the Lord's mercy. That again means that all of us, we have another chance. We have another opportunity. The way I look at it, each and every second of our life, each and every day that we live, it is another chance, another opportunity to improve ourselves. It is another chance and it is another opportunity to find again forgiveness in the eyes of God if we choose to live in correction, if we choose to move and live in repentance. Again, we have a choice that we must make. Will we continue to indulge in sin or will we choose this day to live in obedience to the word of God? Now we'll see there in the 16th verse that Judah, this time, this is the Southern kingdom, not Israel, which is the Northern kingdom. Judah, they mocked God's messengers. They despised the Lord's words that was being sent to them through the prophets. So again, they made light of the Lord. And in return there in the 16th verse, we are told that the wrath of the Lord rose against his people. It rose against Judah till there was no remedy. Now for me, this verse, it is a verse of much concern, great concern, if you will, because what this verse points out to us is that there is a line there is a line that you can cross to where there is no remedy when you choose to live in disobedience. Yes, each and every second that we live, we live under the Lord's mercy. Each and every day that we live is another chance and another opportunity. But there is a point where we cross a line to where when we choose to be fully convicted of sin, meaning that 
we give our lives over to sin, we commit our way to sin, we cross a line to where there is no remedy, where the wrath of God, it raises itself up against us. I believe that we cross that line where we choose to ignore, when we choose to blatantly disregard, not heed the Lord's rebuke. When we cross that line, there is no remedy. The wrath of God, it raises up against us. It moves against us. Just again, as we have history here with Judah, it happened with the Northern Kingdom of Israel as well. Again, don't make light of God's rebuke as many people so seldomly do. We'll see there in the 17th verse that God with his wrath raised up against Judah here. We'll see that God, he brought against the Southern Kingdom, the king of the Chaldeans. That is speaking about the Babylonians. That's talking about Nebuchadnezzar there. We'll see there that the Babylonians, they had no compassion, we are told there in the 17th verse, as they killed the young men of Israel. They even killed the, the virgin as well. We're told there in the 18th verse that the Babylonians, in their lack of compassion for Israel or Judah, we're told that the Babylonians took the treasures of the temple and that they brought those treasures back with them because they utterly destroyed the southern kingdom. We'll see it there in the 19th verse where, again, they utterly destroyed Jerusalem. They burnt it down to the ground and they destroyed the first temple. We'll see there in the 20th verse that those who were of the southern kingdom, those who were not killed, people like Daniel and, and his friends, we're told that they were carried away in captivity to Babylon. Again, God, he had already warned that this would happen. It happened again for those who are of the Northern Kingdom. It's happening for those who are of the Southern Kingdom. We're told that they're carried away captive to Babylon, while others, they actually tried to flee to Egypt. We don't see this in, in our lesson, in the scripture of our lesson for today, but you can find this scripture over in the book of Jeremiah, where there were many who tried to flee from what was happening in the Southern Kingdom. They tried to flee over to Egypt and they even took Jeremiah hostage, if essentially they took him hostage and they brought him over with them uh, to Egypt. But no matter how they ran over into Egypt, we will see in scripture that there, there was nowhere that they could run from God. Essentially Nebuchadnezzar, he eventually made his way. He and the Babylonians, they made their way to Egypt for again, all of those who ran away from the destruction of the Southern Kingdom. And then there in the 21st verse, we'll see that Judah's exile, their captivity in Babylon, it would only last for 70 years. And after 70 years, that's where we lead up to the book of Ezra, the book of Nehemiah. We see where people like Zerubbabel, people like Ezra and people like Nehemiah, they return from the Babylonian captivity back to a Jerusalem that was essentially a wasteland. It was a Jerusalem that had to be rebuilt. Homes again had been destroyed. The first temple was completely destroyed. They had to rebuild the temple as well. Now, while Judah's exile was temporary, while it only lasted for 70 years, we should not think that the exile for the convicted sinner that awaits from the day of the Lord, we should not think that that will be temporary because it will not. As we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, the day of the Lord, it is dark. It is eternal. That is the final judgment of sin. God will judge sin and he will show no mercy of sin. He will show no mercy to the sinner. He will have no compassion. We should not think that the day of the Lord will be temporary. And again, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week, nobody should desire to see the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is going to be eternal punishment and nobody should make light of eternal suffering. Many people do. Many people think that hell is going to be a party. It's not going to be that way. And again, an, uh, an example of that is shown to us in our Sunday school lesson this week. 
the darkness that, that many people will face as we skip over here to the 137th Psalm, that those who were carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon, they are longing for the days in Zion. We see that they miss the days of, of when they were in Zion, Zion also known as Jerusalem there. Their exile, we'll see there from the first verse that, that it was a bitter one. You see, we, we have to remember Daniel's story of when he was in Babylon because Daniel's story, it serves as an example for what it was like for Judah, for those who were carried away in captivity to Babylon. It serves as an example for what it was like living under the Babylonian authority. We have to remember that Babylon tried to make those who they had take, taken away, tried to make them assimilate to their culture. Babylon tried to force their diet on those who they had carried away. They tried to force their religion on those who they had carried away. They essentially tried to force their culture on those who they had carried away into captivity. When those who they had carried away into captivity, when they would not assimilate, they essentially tried to have them killed. Again, think about Daniel's friends who would not worship the, the idol of, of Nebuchadnezzar. They threw them into the fiery furnace to try to again have them killed. So their time being carried away into captivity, into exile in Babylon, the time for Judah and those who were carried away, it was not a pretty time. Again, they longed for the days of where they rejoiced in happiness when they lived in Zion, which again also is Jerusalem. We'll see there in the third verse that the Babylonians, that they mocked those of Judah as they tried to get them to sing the songs of Zion. There in the fourth verse, we'll see that those who were in exile, that they had no joy. They had no song in them to even be able to sing. Back in the second verse, I know I skipped over that verse, but it, it flows in better here in the, uh, with this one. We'll see that in their lack of joy, that they, they hung up their harps because again, they lacked the joy. Their souls, it low, their souls long for the days when they were again living in happiness in Zion, in Jerusalem. So essentially, when they were living in exile, they had no joy. What was it that they could be happy about? Nothing. They didn't have authority over their lives anymore. They lost that power over themselves, all because they chose to indulge in sin. Let that set in for all of you who choose to indulge in sin today. Again, this is a picture of living in eternity, being cast away from God's presence for all of eternity, living in hell. We'll see here in the fifth verse there where the people, they, they didn't want to forget Jerusalem. They didn't want to forget their days of joy. They say there in the sixth verse that should they ever forget Jerusalem, they said that they would let their tongue cling to the roof of their mouth. They, in other words, they never speak, they choose to never sing again because again, their joy had been lost. So the 137th Psalm, it speaks of great grief for all of those who lived in captivity, all of those who lived in exile in in Babylon, there was great grief, there was great sorrow, there was no joy. And I want you to understand that that sets an example. It is a picture of what we call hell, being cast away from God's presence for all of eternity. There are again many people today who want to do away with religion. Essentially, they're talking about faith. They they want to do away with faith. They want to be separate from faith. They want to be separate. They want to be apart from, from the Lord. And again, as the prophet Amos said, nobody should desire that. You see, all of us today, we live under God's grace. We live under his love. There is mercy. However, when God casts the sinner away from his presence for eternity, there will be no grace. 
there will be no compassion from the Lord. There will be no mercy from the Lord. When there is no Lord, when there is no grace, when there is no mercy, when there is no compassion from God, the only thing that is left is loneliness. Hell is not going to be a party. Hell is going to be loneliness. One will be left with their sins and being left in their sins, one will be left with remorse. One will be left with regret because they will have known that they wasted the opportunity that they had to live in correctness. They will know that they wasted their opportunity to heed God's rebuke so that they could one day live in eternal happiness, eternal peace, eternal joy. Again, nobody should desire hell. Nobody should desire the day of the Lord. The, the sorrow, the grief that we see of those who lived in the captivity of Babylon, that is what awaits. And that's again, nothing that you should desire. So what we should take away from our lesson today is to live in repentance. What we should take away from the lessons that we have had all this quarter is heed God's rebuke. Live in repentance. Again, when you do this, you will live in a manner that will please the Lord. And when you please the Lord, you will be blessed by God. Those who live in a manner where they please the Lord, we will live eternally blessed in his heavenly kingdom. That is what we should desire. So, Turn away from sin, turn away from living in disobedience and live in obedience to the word of God. When you do this, you will be blessed and you will be highly favored and you will live eternally in his heavenly kingdom. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Now, if you haven't done so already, I ask all of you to, to follow our channel. Be sure that you follow this channel so that you don't miss a Sunday School lesson, so that you don't miss a Bible study, so that you don't miss a sermon or a food for thought. Be sure that you are following this channel today.